Hey Linda, so you were asking about um, a kind of perspective that I call four-point perspective, uh, a curvilinear perspective. It works a lot like um, two-point perspective in plain old uh, rectilinear perspective in that you've got your, your horizon running through the center of the composition more or less and then um, all your your verticals, your you know, your vertical lines on a building are drawn as vertical lines on the paper perpendicular to the horizon, just like that. Um, so the thing to start thinking about that's different in curvilinear perspective instead of rectilinear perspective. So we've got a vanishing point, and you know all our receding lines are going back to that vanishing point, but. Um, in curvilinear perspective, every line that goes back to the vanishing point goes to two different vanishing points. Um, so if I'm looking, if this is south, I'm looking south, any line that, that goes south points back to that south vanishing point. But if I open my field of view up wide enough so I can see north as well at the same time, or almost see it, then uh, this line that starts south curves around, whoops, missed, <laughs> curves around back to north. And this line curves around back to north, curves to north, okay? So if we're here in the middle looking straight, what's between south and north? Uh, it could be either direction, right? So, um, so if we're looking straight west, and we're looking at a flat wall here in the middle of it as we turn a little to look towards the north it recedes down towards the north so we turn a little to look to the south it recedes down towards the south it makes this this arc shape okay the easiest way to do this is to set up all those vanishing points equal distant from each other um, so we've got that's what's a handy measure here is this going to fit four Boom. All right. So we've got um, north, east, south, west. Let me see. Yep, those all fit on the camera. Great. Um, so if we're drawing some object here in the middle, it if we're drawing a box in the middle, it's near vertical, stays vertical. This side starts east, ends up west. The bottom edge starts east, ends up west. There's that back vertical. This front side starts south, ends up north, starts south, ends up north. We've got that vertical and we've drawn a box here that um, that lets you open up your your viewpoint much wider than normal straight line perspective because I can also keep drawing uh, instead of just that little 60 degree vision or 40 or 50 that classical perspective gives us I can open this up to 180 um, so the trick is how do you draw these these curves and keep them nice uh, I'm given to understand um, that technically, mathematically, these curves should be sinusoids, uh, sections of a sine curve, but that's almost impossible to draw. So, um, instead, we use arcs. We use sections of a circle. And I'm seeing here that my, my distances weren't exact. Oh, that's pretty close. So if I want to draw an arc that goes from north to south, it's part of a circle whose center is on a line uh, above or below east. So if I put the point of my compass on that line, the drawing edge of my compass on north, draw it across to south. If I'm trying to draw a bigger arc, move up the line, the point goes on the line, Drawing edge goes on north. 
<laughs> Narks ran to south. And um, as we go down closer to the horizon, the circle gets huge, right? The, uh, the straight line is a circle with an infinite radius out there. Um, but really close, we need a lot of paper if we're doing this method. But you can get pretty close, and then you can use straight edges and stuff, or uh, French curves, ship's curves, to get those last couple that are too close to the horizon to draw. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is a, I'm going to, I think this is enough to digest, right? North, east, south, west, you've got your four directions, your four vanishing points, you've got arcs that connect from one to the next. So if I'm drawing south, and they're, they're spaced out equally. Um, there's a, another way to look at it where they don't space out equally, but I think this is easier to understand. This is a good place to start, right? And then if you've got more questions and want to get further into it, we can talk about times that they wouldn't space out equally. Okay. So yeah, so let's let's use this to actually draw a little cube here. All right. So here's my vertical for this floating cube. All right. And can I draw that line there? Oh yeah, yeah. It does. I thought maybe the compass would have to be too long to fit on our paper, but it's actually going to make it. See, I'm doing a little trial and error as I move the foot of my compass up and down along that that vertical line. There's that other vertical. Vertical stay vertical. Um, and now the other, so I've got this face here of my box. I want an arc that goes from the south to that corner. Put my foot on the line, south to the quarter. Yeah, I still need to move up. South to the quarter. Oh, getting close. South to, oop. And there's a, a math way to do this instead of doing trial and error, but honestly, this is usually faster. But if you want to know the math way, you know, I'll show you that sometime. So there's that quarter moving back in space towards south. This one here. There. That top edge. Okay. Vertical stay vertical. We just need to find this line here. which is down pretty low. I don't know if our... Yeah, our compass won't quite draw this without going off the page. Um, so let's see, I'm going to ghost in what the last arc that my compass could draw is, and then freehand the one below it. And there's my box drawn in this four-point perspective space. All right? Um, Hope that makes some sense. Thanks.